Hello, my name is Jesus Ramirez from Singularity Engineering. Today, I am going to talk to you about how to set up a model for a perfusion bioreactor using CFD and particularly using ANSYS Fluent. I hope you enjoy this video. In the perfusion bioreactors, the flow moves from the bottom to the top and pass through a filter that is also called scaffold. The perfusion bioreactors generate a very uniform mixing of the media which allow for a better environmental control and also a better control of the physical stimulation of the cells. The perfusion bioreactor can be modeled using different approach. For example, we can develop a model for the complete geometry, but also we can use only one fourth of the geometry. For doing this, we need to use periodic boundary conditions. The scaffold will be simulated as a porous media inside ANSYS fluid. To accomplish the goal of this video, I am going to explain you how to set up the model for an indirect perfusion by a reactor. The simplified geometry of this reactor is shown right now. You can see that we have here which is, uh, the geometry of the perfusion by a reactor. We have the inlet, the fluid inlet. We have the fluid outlet. And here we have this region that will be modeled as a porous cell zone. The porous cell zone is the one that will add as the scaffold of the bioreactor. You can see that in this case, I am showing you the whole geometry, the complete geometry. The other option is to use only one fourth of the geometry. You can see this in the presentation. You see here that I am only using one fourth of the geometry. Then I also have a fluid inlet, a fluid outlet, also the porous cell zone is used as the scaffold, but for using this geometry, only one fourth, we need to use periodic boundary conditions in this phase and in this phase, okay? Um, forward in this video, I will explain you how to set up these periodic boundary conditions. For both cases, the same methodology is used. Initially, only the continuous fluid is solved. Once the flow fields are completely solved, the particles will be injected. The particles will represent the cells inside the bioreactor. Right now, I am going to show you how to set up these models using ANSYS Fluent. The geometry was built in ANSYS space claim. As you can see here, it is composed by three bodies, the bottom sun, the upper sun, and the porous sun. All of three uh, regions or solids uh, share their topology. Then you can see here that the share topology option is enabled. We share, which implies that uh, when the meshing process is performed, then you will have a similar cells in the interfaces of these of of the of the solids or of these zones. Okay. Also, uh, you can see here in groups that. I I have different uh, um, name selectionals or boundary names in order to facilitate the mesh uh, generation and also uh, the for imposing the boundary conditions inside ANSYS Fluent. Once the mesh is performed, then we need to go into Fluent, 
then we are here in the setup of fluent. Then if we double click here in general, we will see that we have a pressure based solver and steady state formulation and I have enabled the gravity because uh, for where I am going to inject particles then this will be a multi-phase flow then the, the gravity has an important impact over the bioreactor performance. Also in models you will see that the, the velocity of the flow is very is very low then initially we can use a laminar approach if you consider that the Reynolds number is high enough to to consider to consider the the turbulent uh, effects then you can double click here and you can select the, the turbulence model you want to to use or you consider to use I recommend using the the k omega or the k epsilon uh, these are the most robust uh, turbulence model in ANSYS Fluent. These are RANS uh, turbulence model, then they are not too much time consuming. Okay, then we don't have any, any other model enabled. Uh, if I go here, then you see that I have water liquid as a, as a material. Remember, if you want to to include another material here, then you double click one of these, then you go here to Fluent Database, then you select the fluid you want, copy and close. And you will have the, the other fluid here if you want to select it. And if I go here to Cell Zone, then you will see that I only, I only have fluid cell zones. I have the three zones that I showed you in the geometry in the space claim, they have the bottom zone, the upper zone, and the power zone. For example, if I double click here in the bottom zone, you will see that this is water liquid and no more. The same for the upper zone. It's the same. And for the power zone, then you have here, then it is water liquid. This is power zone, okay? then that's good and here in porous zone you have the directions of the restrictions then this is in y and zeta are the, the restrictions or for the for the velocity field yep uh, or yeah well how the the, the the porous media is formed in which directions okay and here we have the viscous resistance this is a very very high value in fact, this is a, these are the default values. You can change this, but you need to calculate and to estimate which will be the, the real values for this. Okay, then you have to calculate it. And that's it, everything is by default right now. Also, then in the boundary conditions, I have uh, a velocity inlet. Uh, in this case, it is a, a very 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 low velocity you see here then that was the reason i used a laminar a laminar approach okay and the outlet you see the outlet is a pressure outlet with gauge pressure of zero then atmospheric pressure okay then the other the other boundary conditions are the the walls the, of the bioreactor and they are, let me show you, they are stationary walls and non-slip boundary condition, okay? The, this is the, the default boundary condition of four walls. Then in methods, I am going to use the coupled scheme, uh, second order for pressure and momentum. And by default, I am going to use the pseudo transient, the pseudo transient um, approach. Also the warp phase gradient correction because I am using a mesh with polyhedral and the high order term realization in order to have a, a more stable solution. For initialization, I recommend to use the standard initialization because hybrid initialization does not consider the, the porous effects over the flow domain, then you can, you can obtain an unrealistic velocity field then that's the reason I recommend to use the standard initialization. Okay, then once you have all the model complete, then you check the case and I recommend
recommendation to take to make at this time then you you run the the case to see to, uh, until it converges. okay then let's click here and you will see how this moves very fast okay then we we need to wait until the solution converge once the simulation converged then we go to cft post to see the results then in this case i create a plane an xy plane now remember you can create it here in location go to plane and you will have something like this open then you select the plane you want x white is the one i want right now and the color i am color it by velocity and this is and this is what what I have right now, that is the a reduction velocity in the porous zone, in the porous region, and an augmentation of the velocity in the inlet of the outlet that have a smaller uh, area. Then, also, if you want to see, for example, pressure, you can change here and see pressure, and then you see how here in the porous region there is a, a pressure drop, an important pressure drop uh, because of the resistance of the porous media. And also you can see a lot of different uh, features of the flow fields in CFD post that you can, you can play with. Once you have solved the fluid flow field and as as we saw previously in this video uh, we can inject the, the particles then for injecting the particles what we have to do is going here to discrete phase in this case we are going to solve the particles using a, La a Lagrangian approach then you go here and you will create a, an injection the injection is created by double click here in injection then you will click here in create I already create uh, an injection, it is called cells particles, then I'm going to show you the injection. Mm, the injection, um, uh, the particles are injected from the inlet, uh, there is an injection type from surface. These are higher particles, then there is no reactions among the, the particles and the fluid flow. The material in this case is just for sample purposes, it's anthracite. The diameter of the particle is 1 micrometer. The velocity of injection is the same velocity of the fluid at the inlet. And the total flow rate is this one. I am scaling the flow rate in the face area, let's say in the inlet. And I inject in the particles using normal direction. Then, then the, the direction of injection is normal to the inlet. Okay. Then that's it. That's it. Uh, if we double click here in this red face, we see that we have this value by default and I am not going to change anything here and that's it just uh, running again the simulation using the as initial field the flow field obtained in the in the previous model without particles okay if you if you want to see how this case uh, is characterized then you can go to CFD post and you can import the, the particle data. Remember that for doing this in CFD post, you need to export the particle tracking data from Fluent and import it here in CFD post. For doing that, then you go here to import and import particle track file. Remember, this particle particle track file must be import export. I'm so sorry, export from Fluent. Okay. Then I already imported. Then once you import the the particle track file then you will see something like this then this is the particle track then if i uncheck it then you see how the streamlines of four particles disappear if i enable it uh, they appear then if you double click here then you have different options for example if you increase here this then you will have more streamlines also if you want to color it by let's say velocity then also you, you have that option. I can, for example, hide this, this plane. If the symbol, for example, if, I, if you want the symbol, let's say it's a ball, then you will have this. 
these walls here, you can you can for example disable the not to show tracks uh, if you want to show tracks then you can here you can put the ball smaller okay and for example if you want maybe you can do an animation with here here then you will see this is the animation of the particles then you can do a lot of things um uh, here you can see of the pose and many other things in processing the the results okay then it's very interesting to, to use then you can play with this tool in order to have the the data you you want to to use for for your report or for your purposes and with this i am going to finish the this video this is the the first part uh, of this of this video then in the second part i am going to explain you how to to prescribe the model in a transient approach and also i will show you how to use the periodic boundary conditions thank you very much for for watching this video and if you have any question please write it in the comment section and we will try to to answer you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you very much. Bye bye.